This meeting is being recorded. Well, well, well. New Year's <laughs> blessings to each and every one of you. Happy 2022. We hope that you all had a wonderful and blessed holiday season, Christmas, Thanksgiving, New Year's. And we are so happy that you are back and joining us. We are back and we are <laughs> fired up. <laughs> we have so much to talk about, but we're going to start with one thing tonight. So let me start there. I am Iris Denise Owens, your host of the Autopsy of Her Healing, Evolving Resiliency. And on the line is my beautiful sister and co-host, Stephanie Diani. Stephanie Diani Green. Hello. Hello, Hi. honey bunny. Hi, honey bunny. <laughs> How are you? I am phenomenal. Awesome. Phenomenal. Awesome. Yes. Ready to take on 2022 with a vengeance. Absolutely. <laughs> And you know what? So we just want to share with the audience. And if you if you all followed and watched all the episodes up to the end of uh, 2021, you all saw that we had an opportunity to be together. And we actually were in together in New York at Rockefeller Center. Amazing yes, we were. To be at the tree <laughs> Christmas time. We watched the lights at Saks Fifth Avenue. We walked the yeah. crowded streets. We ate. We had so much fun. It was such well, a we had ice cream. Me and your mom had ice cream no, in the cold. Yeah, yeah. Y'all ate ice cream. ice cream. So listen, folks. <laughs> yes, it was cold. It's cold. And the and her and my mom decided they don't have ice cream in the cold. And that was the best ice cream ever. <laughs> I, yeah. And, and no, I was not having ice cream with them. Um, we had already had we ate outside. We had yeah, our Mexican we, food outside. Right. We had already had some adult beverages outside in the cold, so that was more than enough. <laughs> <laughs> but it was awesome to be yes, in the city. Oh my God. I think from here on out now, I think I'm gonna have to start to plan to go home for Christmas because it has been I after we after I went to New York for that moment and I thought to myself. I don't know if I had ever, when I lived in New York, I don't recall that I had ever actually been at Rockefeller Center at Christmas time, ever. Wow. And so for me, that was really amazing. I, I, I really enjoyed that. It was really, really fun. So um, it was, it's like nothing like it. I mean, I spent all my like time it. at, I mean, the, the you know, energy, I saw ice skating there, little girl, but it's nice. Yeah. The energy in the city was amazing. Oh my God, yes. um, it, it was crazy. Uh, we had so much, like I said, we had so much fun just having dinner and, and going out. And then my daughter and my mom in tow, we just had a really good time. And so we are, we we're both so happy and so blessed to have been able to spend that time together. So thank you, honey bunny. It was awesome. And so we, we will have well, an opportunity. So happy you <laughs> we will have an opportunity again to record, to really record together on site, on location together <laughs> at some point in time. Exactly. <laughs> so we're looking forward to that. But anyway, um, we both have said, we, you know, I don't know, Steph, how you, I know you were home, you spent the time, you, well, actually, no, let's talk about that because you actually went to Savannah for the holiday. I was in Savannah. Yeah. I was in so, Savannah with my family. Right. Um, my baby came home from school, you know, goes to school on the West Coast. So it was uh -huh. really nice. So I think he was he was here for five days, and my uh, my, my oldest baby she came home. She's mm -hmm. in the city, and we was on a plane to Savannah, right. so we were there for like five days, nice. and we had a really really nice time, good. you know, with our family. We had a really good time. Good. Played all the games, had a whole bunch of food, you know, just had a really really great time. Awesome. Didn't hang out as much because COVID was starting up, right. um, but we so many of us okay, we all couldn't even fit in the picture basically <laughs> but it, it was nice though nice had a good time we did nice. you know, it was like oh my god <laughs> yeah you know we we had like we had drinks for the first time maybe the second time we really don't do the drinks my niece was there she made the mix oh nice mm -hmm. there's always a good, so it's always good to have a mixologist in the family <laughs> It is. It is. It definitely is. It helps. Yeah, it does help. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, it, it, it could be a lot going on. You got to be like, oh yeah, maybe it's time to have like yeah. a little, you know. I keep, I keep saying <laughs> one day that's gonna, I'm gonna get my license to be a to be a mixologist. 
just for the yeah, my, my brother has his. Yeah, I tell you, yeah. he, he, can't, he can't hurt you. You know, no, nope, can't longer, hurt. It's can't like hurt. knowing how to make your own drink. Right. Um, well, and, the, and the picture is that. We are going to go ahead and kick off our, you know, 2022. We just want to say we are so excited that we are in 2022. Um, we are. Well, wait, what did you do? Oh, what? What? Oh, well, I spent, well, Thanksgiving, I was, of course, here, here with my family in Atlanta. Um, and then Christmas, I was home with my children and my mom. Um, so that was really nice. It was quiet, but it was great. And then New Year's, I went to, or I was with my circle, my sister circle and, you know, significant others. And um, we had a really good time. We've been We've been doing this New Year's thing like this ever since I guess COVID came in, and because um, mm -hmm. we've been spending New Year's together for, man, I want to say probably almost eight, ten years now. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, that's we've been spending New Year's together for the last yeah somewhere between eight and ten years, and then when COVID hit, we just decided we were like, well, we'll get together early, so we get together at like you know six o'clock. And, mm -hmm. and then everybody, last year, everybody went home and we all right. brought the new year in at home. But this year, we literally all stayed together until after midnight. So we were outside watching oh. uh, the neighbor's fireworks go off and stuff like that. Uh -huh. Man, we had some good, good food. It was amazing. Um, mm. So it was really, really fun. We had a really good time. So it was really nice. And so... Uh, you know, looking nice. forward to jumping back in, to, you know, getting back to work. And even though I was working on New Year's Eve, that was not part of my plan. <laughs> but we, we never stop working now. Right, so we it's, never stop working, not. even when we want to. Even when we want to, like I really want, like every time, I, every time the phone would ring, I'd go, "For real, somebody's calling me on New Year's Eve? Are you kidding me?" Be like, "Is that important? Do I have to take care of that." Now? Right, but, but then you go, but then you go. Yeah, but tomorrow I do have to, I do have to eat. So, hello? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah it's, so cool. <laughs> it's true, it's true. Because I know Savion so, and his girlfriend was here and we just, um, we toasted at midnight, watched the ball drop. Right. So it was nice. Because my nephew came and so him and Savannah was in the city at her apartment and they hung out for New Year's Eve like that. So nice. it was nice, it was quiet. And like shortly after I, I went to bed and I was like, okay, <laughs> good. Right. I had my sparkling I think, cider and I well, went to bed. We, we, we literally ended up staying up to about two o'clock in the morning. And then the next day we were all like, I don't know what possessed us to think that that was cool. <laughs> Well, that, that's my that's my norm. I got you know that's my norm. I, I those are my working hours. <laughs> oh, Lord. Yeah, I'm like I, felt, I, felt, I felt like something had ran over me the next day. Like, uh, yeah, you trying to be grown, staying up till two o'clock in the morning. But it, yet, yet it was great fun. I enjoyed it, and it was yeah. fun. So it was a great that's you nice. know great end of the year, and uh, you know planning for a great and very prosperous 2020 you know for all the all the visions all the things all the dreams all the things that we you know individually collectively you know are talking about what we would like to do and the goals that we have set um it just you know just looking forward to a to a year and despite all the things that are going on um it's still better it's still gonna be a good year right it's better to focus on the positive yeah. than to exactly. focus on the negative because it, mm -hmm. focusing on the negative just wears you down. So if you just keep your eyes lifted. And, and, it, and, it's, your, and it's your perspective. Yeah. It's like your perspective. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you can say like, oh, this is like, but it, it's your perspective, you know? So right. you know, my, my, the glass is always half full over here. Exactly. And that's how you, you know have I mean? to look at it. it right. You know, really it is, you know? Right. So, and life is too short. It really, really yes. is, you know? This is true. Life is too short, you know? You see it like, a lot of people, you know, are leaving very young, you know, yeah. you can't say, oh, you know, you don't know when it's your time. So you better enjoy, you better live life. That's what you better do. Absolutely. And be like, happy. Like you don't know if it's going to be the last day. Because exactly. You know, exactly. you do not. Because you That's really right. Don't. That's right. That's right. You don't have any idea. Don't know the day, the time, the hour, any of those right. things. So just try Only to live God it knows. and enjoy it mm -hmm. and have fun, you know. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I tell the people what you got to say, how you feel, like the people that you love and you care about, let them know. Right, exactly. And and also mm-hmm. make the decision that, is it worth saying? You know, that that's something I, this year, I, you know, last year rather, and this year I have said, do I really need to say say something? Like if it comes down to it where I'm uncomfortable in a situation, I'm uncomfortable with a person, I'm uncomfortable... And if I'm feeling like this no longer is really serving the purpose in which it came together or why, right? Whatever it may be, whether it's a work relationship, or, you know, then sometimes do I need to say something negative to really mm-hmm. make it, or do I need to just take the action to, to deal with it so that I feel what I desire to feel about it if that makes sense because no it makes think, a lot of sense. i think sometimes we we spend a lot of time talking about it mm-hmm. and sometimes the talking about it it doesn't change because no. talking <laughs> about it I, i'm talking about it you're talking about it we're all talking about it uh-huh. but most times nobody's listening and then nobody's yeah. taking any action to do anything mm-hmm. differently right yeah it's kind yeah. of one of those things where it's like okay are you good you feel better now mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. I, yeah i think so okay i mean you know instead of like you know <laughs> you're talking about the idea about it but you just, i mean i mean like i say it doesn't have to be it has to be neg- negatively the way that you say it as right. far as i i can show you better than i can tell you right and and that and it's the truth you know what i mean there's nothing bad about that because you know people give a lot of lip service and you know you you're doing all this and nothing else is getting done today, you know today i came across in my feed um i love valerie burton actually valerie burton is my who i um got my coaching certificate from and i'm talking about valerie burton who's the author and the, the life coach um that's who i got my who certified me and so i came across in my um memories today uh, something she posted and i do believe she posted this like in January 2017. I have been following her a long time. I had several of her books um, and I did not have my coaching um, uh, certification at that point, but I shared her post and the post that she wrote was stop talking so much about your obstacles and start talking about how to work around them. The most successful people don't rehash problems. They explore solutions. Hashtag speak differently. And I think that's what I was trying to say is learning to take a conscious and making a conscious decision to speak differently about Mm -hmm. even our own situations, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because life is, you know, full with ups and downs, ebbs and waves, Mm -hmm. highs and lows. (laughs) And And not to mention words have power. Words have so much power. Yes, we have to watch what comes out of our mouths. Right. Because you are you are putting those out into the universe. Absolutely. You know, we have to be Absolutely. really, really, really careful. Right. So true. And you, you have know. to be careful how you talk about yourself to yourself. Mm, to yourself. You yeah. always say that, yes. It's listening. <laughs> exactly. Did you hear it's what true. I said? You have to be yep. careful about how you talk about yourself to yourself because yourself is listening. Mm-hmm. You know? And so... And it becomes a thing, like, and that's not to say that you ignore or that I'm trying to encourage you to ignore. I'm talking to myself first. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's not about ignoring what is really going on, things that real problems, real challenges, because life is filled with them. Mm-hmm. But but take your moment to, to have, you know, if you want to throw the tantrum about it, then okay, throw the tantrum about it. But then once you get it from the tantrum, now your mindset has to be, okay, now that I've identified this as being a pain in the butt, I don't know what I'm going to do about it, da, da, da. You have to then start your strategizing about what you need to do, how you need to do it, or who you need to seek to help you to get it done. Exactly. Because the, exactly. Wallowing, the wallowing in it is not helpful. Um, and also the other part of that is sitting and not as, asking for help. Oh, absolutely. That's important. You got to ask for help. Asking you got to ask help. for help. And in, 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 two, in, in a short few months, it would have been two years that we all have been 
in a situation that none of us could have ever phantomed, none of us could have ever dreamed of, none of us, even when it hit us, none of us still at this point would have thought that we would still be dealing with COVID. And yet we are. And there are people who have been in situations that of course they never could have imagined and had no control over those situations. But mm -hmm. we live in a society that asking for help is shame. You know, asking for mm -hmm. help is shame. And and that's really a bad thing. We can't we should not live in a in a in a world in which if I needed help, I'm ashamed to ask you because I feel like that comes with judgment or that comes with what do you need it for? Or, you know, so no, I agree with you. You can't, you, know, you shouldn't feel shame, hard. you know, but we tend to make people feel like that. You know what I mean? Right. But you don't have that. You don't have that together. Right. I, I remember when, you know, when people would go through things and I had a couple of people that I would know, you know, especially us being in the real estate business. So you're working with your clients, you know, right. and then they apply for mortgage, all these things come right. up. You no, know, people don't, they don't take care of their business. They don't do this. And then I found some people in the mortgage, in this businesses. They went through their own issues, Absolutely. you know, now you snap, but like you're the one talking all this negativity about other people now that you're going through it. Right. It's like, it's okay. Right. But no, it's not okay. No. You have to understand that, you know, like these hospital bills, whatever it is, it's not for you to judge people and, and call them all sorts of things because you so-called have all your stuff together. Right. Now you had a hiccup in your life. Now your credit is not so great. You know, right. so you never know when you're not going to be in somebody else's situation like that. As you right. see, everything is live. We don't get it. My dog is, you know, excited. My little Pomeranian he came home to visit. <laughs> but, um, but you, yeah, you hear it like that, she. But it's like you have to, like, it's not, it's not fair. It's just not nice, right. you know. I know right. that when I was talking, like my mentor, he was talking about like 2020 that we really need to stop procrastinating. And I, that's where yes. I got my certification from is Tony Gaskins Jr. He said, procrastination is the worst thing. And we do procrastinate. Yes, we need to get in on this thing. After yes. you, like, because sometimes you wallow in it, then you wallow in it some more, then you wallow in right. it some more. You got to get up on that floor and let's, let's right. get it done. Right. Get up off that, get up off that sofa, get up off it. that chair, get out of that house, get out of your really? way. Yeah. Get out of your own head. You really do. Um, you know, because it it is it is those things again, how we talk to ourselves that yes. causes us yes. to become stifled. You know. Right. Because sometimes you really you you are in your own way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then we have the people that are just negative. You have to watch who you're talking to and sharing your dreams and hopes with, because everybody's not there. Uh, everybody doesn't understand that. Oh no, people like we really are like crabs in the barrel. People want to see you right down there with them. You know, they don't want like when you're oh, I have all these dreams and these aspirations for myself. You can't tell everybody, you know, you need to keep that between yourself, you know, and your God. And you know, you can share with people that are on the same page. Right. But you have to be so, so careful. Because right. people like scared you get away from them, you know. And right. you know, and those like a lot of them are family members. Those could be the worst you share your dreams. And aspirations well, with dream dream so you, come we never gonna do that. Forms, <laughs> never <gonna> do that. <laughs> you have to we have to remember that the people who the people who you are closest to, which typically ends up being your parents, your siblings, mm -hmm. your best friends, right? Mm -hmm. They don't realize mm -hmm. at times that they can make or break you, right? But then there comes a time in life where you also have to realize. I can't, I can't give you that much power over my life, the make or break. Power, exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes you, you mm -hmm. realize that if I'm going to share it, then I got to be prepared for what they're going to say, but you exactly. also have to be prepared to understand for what point they're coming from. You know, it's just like someone once said, you cannot ask a person who is financially broken to help you financially plan makes sense. Oh, absolutely. You can't, absolutely. I can't, I can't expect it. You know, people always say too, a person who doesn't have a car, you should never loan them your car. 
because there's a reason why they don't have a car. Either they can't afford a car or they had a car and they didn't take care of their car. But either way, you can't, you shouldn't loan your car to that person because that person could leave you desolate, like wreck your car and not take care of your car, get tickets with your car, whatever. It's not going to be a good thing. So, mm -hmm. so they, they never had a car to appreciate, so they don't know anything about having a exactly. Car. And and so and that's the, and I think for that's a life lesson because when we are talking, like you just said, about sharing your dreams and your visions and your aspirations with people, they are dream killers. They kill your mm -hmm. dreams oh, because they, <laughs> they they don't know what that means to dream, right? No, no. The fact is they may have once in their lifetime had a dream and their mm -hmm. dream never came to fruition or someone killed mm -hmm. their dream or every dream exactly. that they ever had, someone mm -hmm. shot it down or someone told them, you need to stop that silly dreaming because that's never going to happen. But mm -hmm. that's where the resiliency of a human being comes in. That's this right. Is, this is why we talk about the things we talk about is because there, we all have so many different experiences in life, and yet they seem so different. When you talk to other human beings, you find that my situation is not as, as different as I think it is from yours. And that comes, exactly. across, that comes across all social economic statuses, all mm -hmm. genders, right. all races, mm -hmm. all cultural mm -hmm. backgrounds. And that's where we think we're so different. And we're not. Yeah, we're not. Because no, human not at all. beings are human beings. We all hurt the same. And we yes, all bleed the are. same color blood. Mm -hmm. I don't care what, how much yes, you have, true. what degree you have. We all bleed the same way. You know, I remember mm -hmm. being on a train going to work when I still lived in New York. And uh, we were all, it was rush hour. We were all on a train going to work, you know, and of course, every time, you know, if you're not a New Yorker or if, you, if, you, if you've ever lived in a city with public transportation, then you understand that train needs to keep rolling. And when that train mm -hmm. comes to the, the abrupt stop and they go, sorry, folks, and the whole <laughs> no. train is like, oh, you know, I got to get to work. I don't care. <laughs> Whatever it is, fix it because I got to get to work. Right. And so this particular morning, this particular morning, the train stops and the train is like half the train is in the tunnel and the other half of the train is into the station. And so they are telling us we have to wait. There's like, there's been an emergency da, 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 da. we'll be moving shortly. Okay. So we sit, we wait, we sit, we wait. And then finally the train moves. So the, tr the doors open and they're asking that we all exit the train. So now everybody's really cursing. I go to work. Da, 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 da. Everybody's pissed off and upset. Okay, <laughs> as, you, as we start to move out of the train and we're looking at the platform, right, looking at the cars, a guy had a heart uh, attack. This guy had a heart ooh, attack and died ooh. on the train. And standing there watching this man, like life leaving this man's body. And so you saw life leaving and you saw as the blood is, you know, he started to turn from being Caucasian to that, you know, that kind of palish looking color to the grayish looking color to the point where now wow. you're just dark. And I realized mm -hmm. at that point in mm -hmm. life that when we die, I'm sorry to tell you, we're all the same color. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's true. It's true. when life leaves something, dead is dead. Dead does not have, mm -hmm. dead is dark. Dead is dark. Yes, yeah, gray. It's like, it's the, gray. like you see, it's like, it's a whole. Yes, it really, once, yes. Once, once life leaves the body and life, you know, the blood starts to settle and you turn a total grayish color. You do, you do, absolutely. And something, that I, and something that I also discovered in death, like when my father passed away, my father was sick. And so my father was in the hospital, but, and he was sick and his skin was, you know, he just did not look well. 
But when mm-hmm. my father passed away and I went to the, you know, I got to the, the nursing home that day and I saw my, my father's skin was like a baby's behind. It was so smooth and his, he just looked so angelic. And I thought, mm-hmm. wow, again, death is freeing. It releases mm-hmm. whatever, yeah. whatever was ailing you when you die, it leaves. You let it go. It's true. It leaves. Yeah. Whatever it leaves. the it's stress true. was, whatever the pain was. That's right. The, it's so true. Man, when we start to understand life and death and that in between for real, that dash, mm-hmm. that's where you're living. There's a dash. That's right. The dash is there for the living. That's right. right. That's it is right. truly what you do in that dash. That matters. That's everything. Mm-hmm. That's everything. But not much, but not to only mention in death where we're all the same. When we have a missing chromosome, mm. I don't care what race you are, what country you're from. Right. You always look the same. Yes. You can look at somebody and tell that. You know what I mean? When somebody has cancer, has gone through chemotherapy. Yes. Doesn't matter the same, you know what I mean? Yes. Before we had all the different treatments that we had, that we have now for AIDS. Mm-hmm. When, oh, yes. you know, you, you could look at a person, they all look the same. Yes. No matter what race, what yes. color, and it was all the same. Yes. So even in life, we all share in the same humanness. That, and thank you. And that's why I said, when we when we really you know it's talked about a lot about Mm -hmm. being the human race but it is that is not where we live because as humans we're selfish right absolutely you know i i really do believe that when you when you allow yourself to be human and you allow yourself to not hold on to your, your biases and your prejudice and your, your mm-hmm. this is what I believe, mm-hmm. right, type thing. You mm-hmm. learn so much about yourself, but you learn mm-hmm. so much about the world. As you just mentioned, you said, Absolutely. you know, the AIDS epidemic. So when the AIDS epidemic hit, I was, I, th- I want to say I was probably a sophomore in college. I was either second year freshman no we were like we were like i know i was already well i started college early it was like i was like 17 16 but okay. I, I was working at barney's okay so and i remember all the guys that were there all like they were you know they had alternate lifestyles and all of a sudden they started marrying women because the well, epidemic well was then just like I, well going i was i know i was in college i just don't remember where that's like 82 81 Okay, well, no, then I was on, my, yes, I was in college, no, right. so it was my junior, so my junior well, you year. Because I mean, you didn't graduate to 83, right? I had graduated 83, right, so yeah, so, so, so this was like 82. Okay, so I was working at a methadone clinic down on Spring Street, mm-hmm. right, mm-hmm. and um, I, you know, I, I was bright-eyed and bushy-tailed about saving the world. Right. I'm a psych major Mm -hmm. and I have this opportunity Mm -hmm. to work with people who are coming to this methadone clinic with the idea and the concept of, you know, I'm going to help these people, you know, get back into the world and live their lives and da 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 da. Okay. AIDS hits. And now, for lack of a better word, we were in a pandemic, but they didn't consider it a pandemic because it didn't affect everyone but it was definitely an epidemic, right? But, but it so did affect everyone. It, it did, but the, but the world didn't see it that way because the world no, felt like you had this, you had a group of people who you mm-hmm. thought that they exactly. were the only ones being affected by this. And so- and how ignorant we, of you. <laughs> how, right, how ignorant of us as human beings, right? How, mm-hmm. how uneducated of us and so mm-hmm. all of that. And so- I had to go because I was a a substance abuse counselor. We were all sent to a training to be able to discuss and how to guide our 
our clients and our patients in about going to get tested. Man, this is so crazy how right now I feel like this is part of where we are in life. It's crazy. But we had to talk to our clients about going to get tested. At that point, the test took two weeks. The results took two weeks to come back. In that time frame, people would go and take the test and they could not handle the stress of waiting. They would commit suicide. There were so many suicides committed after someone had taken this test or after they found out that they were in fact HIV positive. But in my training, my trainer was a, was a male, a gay male who had a partner. He was married to his partner. And this was long before we, that, you, you know, marriage was, it was, legalized. It was legalized, but he was married to his partner and they had been together 20 something years. And he, be, and, and so, as you just said about, you could see he was sick. There was no guessing what was wrong with him, right? He had mm-hmm. his, his um, box of tablets, all the meds that he had to take mm-hmm. sitting on the table, right? Mm-hmm. And he had all of the sores and the legions and the whole nine. But he was there teaching us, teaching us about what he knew about this disease. And I remember he taught me something that day that I will never, ever forget. And that was when he started to talk about his husband, his love, the person who had, this man had been on his deathbed three times. And he talked about how his partner nursed him, took care of him, fed him, picked him up, took him from the room to the bathroom, bathed him to I realized that day, who am I to say to another person, oh my God, you're talking about another same sex. That's sick. When I close my eyes or I just listen to that man, all I heard was someone who loved another human being and had someone who loved them back. And that is the part of our lives, the humanness that we lose, we forget. We do we forget. We really do forget. forget. Human mm-hmm. beings. And it's, not, it's, human and it's everybody. Yeah. And even even you know the you no know, the you know alternate groups, you know, it's just not, you know, everybody. We right. forget because we forget really what it's all about. And so everyone's trying to prove a point. Everyone's trying to make a point. Right. You know what I mean? And there's not really a point to be made, you know. If you live your authentic life, and I think that's what has a lot to do with it, because all these lives that people are living, a lot of people aren't living authentic lives. Correct. And that's the that's the points people are trying to get to, but they're not just saying it. Just be authentic in who you are. Yes. You know, there's no need to dance around the bush or whatever, but people don't want to be authentic. They want to have all these no. different faces and they're like, I'm this, I'm this, I'm that, I'm that. And, you know, you, it's like, you don't know, it's like people don't know who they are now. Right. You know, right. and it's like more, even even now you see in the school system, like the kids are so, so confused, you know, and I can honestly tell you, it's, I, I feel for them, you know, yes. because when you're in, when you're in high, junior high school, high school, when you start having those hormonal changes, oh, even before all of the uproot of the confusion, you right. were already confused. Right. Now you have all of this place on you, which I yes. don't, I don't, I, I don't understand why you let people be their authentic self and figure, help them figure out who they How are. How to maneuver. Right. Exactly. Because instead of we, like, we, as a society, we, we keep trying to change people to who and they put are. labels on everybody. Right. And, and, and the yeah. labels don't just, we know labels have, it's not just sexuality, it's sexuality, is racism, it's, it, it's yes. every yes. ism. Let's put it that way. It's every ism. Yeah. And you know we're I mean? all it's guilty. Like, you know, you wanna... We're all guilty of it at some point in time. But I mm-hmm. think we would be a better world, a better human race 
when we learn tolerance and acceptance for a difference. And, difference. and patience. And patience, absolutely. And patience, for sure. You know what I mean? For sure. And it's like, you know, the thing is, I mean, I think that, you know, you have to, you know, even like, you know, and like I have like, you know, my nephew, I have two nephews, a gay, my sister, my niece, but you have to, I think the idea, and you know, like a, a lot of my friends, you know, I, I, I went to FIT, but the idea of, you know, even whatever you, whatever, whoever you are, whoever you decide to love, but the idea of you feeling like, oh, um, everybody's gay or, you know, my gay male friends, oh, I can turn everybody. You have thought that terminology does not work, right. you know? That you don't want everybody's everybody's straight. Or I could I can make somebody who obviously that's not who they are. You want to now also make them that way. Right. But that 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 whole thing because I do feel whatever you are, there is a mate for you out there. Absolutely. For you to take other people that's not that and try to like that's your goal in life. Right. I don't understand what any of those things are about. Right. And that's a dangerous place for us to be. You know, okay. and so and then, so when you now you're saying that, oh, all of a sudden you're 13, 14, I'm, they're confused. Oh, they, that, so, you know, may, maybe you like boys or maybe you like girls, you know, that we all were confused at that age. Not about like just it's hormonal It's we're growing up, you yeah. know, we're becoming adults. You know, I would never want to be there again. But here we are at our ages and our 50s going through another hormonal change, <laughs> you know. There we go. So you're going to go through it again as you go through life. But yeah. let them like figure out what they are without right. throwing all these other things at them. That just makes it more difficult. Right. Or or yeah. where we get to the point is I'm going to make you. You have to be yeah. this. And, and that's, yeah. that goes with that's everything. True. Again, people have I, to learn I, I, how I, to be their authentic selves. And I... And that's I, what I'm talking about. And, I, and, and so, and there are people who, you know, who conversations people will say you know we keep letting everybody want to do what they want to do and so kids need to yes you do have to groom children you do have to teach children you do have that. to give them foundation you do but there also comes a point that just because I'm a child doesn't mean I don't know what I feel exactly and I don't know what how, I mean. that's how people or I don't know what I want that's how mm -hmm. people get overlooked and ignored um you know and it's so funny because what we what we discussed what we said we were going to talk about tonight um was really about sleeping in anger stop sleeping with, stop sleeping with the enemy stop sleeping with the enemy or sleeping with anger because there was a really great movie that was called sleeping with anger with danny glover that we talked about if you've never watched that movie you should go check it out <laughs> it's really good absolutely uh, <laughs> really really good <laughs> and then the um sleeping with the enemy was the movie with um julia roberts julia roberts right mm -hmm. in either case both of these movies were about relationships right and and how the you know anger or discord or whatever you want to call it how it affects control mm -hmm. and control affects <laughs> the people yeah. who are in it and the people who are experiencing it and the people who even the one who's inflicting it and the one who is it's being afflicted upon. And I have to say like the end, like last year, and like I'm saying, I'm sure all these, the crimes that we see, the crimes against children from parents, right? Um, crimes against children from parents, significant others, you know, and, and then children who are committing crimes against their parents and, and or against each other. I'm not, or against each other. I'm not saying, I mean, we know there was Cain and Abel in the Bible. Exactly. Right. We, I mean, it's new underneath the sun. Right, there's nothing clear. new underneath <laughs> the sun. So, it's, it's difficult at times to process the things that people do. Because now in the Bible, honestly, I'm saying this is not a Bible study lesson. I don't recall that there were, you know, parents killing children. 
Um, I don't recall that. And if I and if there is, I'm gonna have to go and find it. Well, when well, he didn't kill his son, but he was gonna sacrifice his son Abraham. You know, but God but told, that, but God told him to bring a sacrifice. God did not tell him that he thought that's what God meant. Right. And but and, and he was gonna do it until he heard the burning bush was like, don't do right. it. You know because I mean? God didn't tell so, it. he he had he had a thought in his mind and so but other than that, I don't know a place where no, no, other than that parents and he didn't do it. <laughs> and he didn't do it. I don't know a place in, in the history of you know where that happened. And yet in this world in which we live in right now, it appears to be a normal thing that if I'm tired of you, if I can't control you, if I can't make you do what, I, what I've told you I need you and want you to do, or if you get to the point where you think you don't have to do it anymore, then I think I have a right to hurt you, harm you, maim you, or just flat out get rid of you, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, if we think back on the number of stories we have heard of pregnant women being murdered by their husbands. Absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. um, fathers murdering their wives and their children. Why? Because mm -hmm. there was financial problems, but mm -hmm. it wasn't just the financial problems. I, don't I just don't want to. Her. I don't want to be with her anymore. But I want to be with her. I want to, I want to start a over, new family over here. <laughs> right. I want. Right. Exactly. I want to start a new family. You know. Or you're expendable. Or right. Or the mothers who you know. This is too much for me, and so I'm deciding I can't handle this anymore. And so I'm not going to just take myself out. I'm going to take the kids with me. Or I'm so angry at you know. I'm so angry at the ex or the father of the children that this is my punishment to you. How are you, you're, yeah, mentally you're punishing, but what did the children do? They didn't do anything. Why, why did they deserve to die? Because you decided that that wasn't, they didn't have the right to live anymore or that you, you felt the world would be better off without you. And so then you weren't going to leave them in the world without you. So now, and it, it is, it I, I mean, so I, I get that. I, I just I, I understand that. I understand if you're in that state of mind and you're saying like this world is so bad and I'm not I'm if I'm leaving, I'm taking my kids with me because I don't want to leave them in the world to be abused also. I'm not saying it's right. I mean you're mentally unstable, obviously. But I get it. Like, you know, because if you're gonna be in like if you feel the world I if you feel the world is no good, then I'm gonna just like leave my kids here and feel like whatever has happened to me to put me in that state, then you're not gonna want them to, all those things to happen to them either. But it's the reality is that you're mentally unstable. You need to get the help that you needed and you probably shouldn't have procreated in the first place. You know, if you felt like that, exactly. let's be clear. That, you know what I mean? Great, that, that, that would have been, that's that would have been point. your best but bet. Again, you know what I'm saying? But it still goes back to, and I clearly agree with you about your mental, your mental health and your mental status is not stable when you are making those type of decisions. But also the fact that you believe taking your life or taking someone else's life is the answer. And it's not, you know. Well, when you, you, when you, you, like, you, you know, had, a person you, that has tried to commit suicide, you, I mean, never like when my, I was young, prior to marriage and children. Right. But um, you are not, you're not, you do feel oh, like, I, I, I mean, you, you know, you like, oh, like I, I know I would. Right. I know can't the bear pain. this pain anymore. I can't bear it's, this pain It's definitely anymore. the pain because ch children endure a lot of pain. I never forget my mom used to say to me, take care of yourself. She said, because when you see children that are motherless, it's the, it's the most saddest things that you could ever see. Yeah. You know, not to say that someone's not going to love your child, but they're not going to love your child the way you love your child. And it, it's really, really a scary situation when right. you're having children that don't have mothers or they end up in the, um, in the, um, what do you call it? Where they become foster care. Right. right. Uh, and, and, or you know, they and end they, up with family members who promise to take care of them and, they're, exactly. and they are abusing them. Abused. Right? 
Oh yes, you know yeah. that um, you know Cinderella story is real, honey. Oh yeah, really real. You yeah. know, no doubt about that. But compared but to what like, Cinderella went through, Cinderella came out fair. And some, yeah, it was. You know, if you if you look things. at and you compare what people do to children these days when they have said that they would take them in or they would care for them, the things that they do to them, the horrid, awful things that they do or the horrid, awful things that human beings do to one another that, hey, mm -hmm. we're married to death do we part or until mm -hmm. I kill you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I we tell know you what, that my, that's my, not what it's um, designed for, but people take advantage of these opportunities and these vows that, that oh, we, they do. And you, but like, and just like when my, when my, when, um, when my mom, when her husband left her, you know, they had gotten back together. And, um, when he left her and he left me in an empty apartment, I was an infant, right? You know, I was only like three months old, you know, I was in the empty apartment alone and he took his kids and, um, when my mother tried to get her kids back, her older three children, they used to hide them in the basement. They used to do all sorts of things. My mom couldn't get her kids. Right. But I see, and that my sister, who's two years older than me, it, it, I could see how it had affected her because by the time my mother got her back, she was about like five or six years old. Mm -hmm. And when she was taken, she was like two. Right. And, um, you know, she literally had to kidnap her kids to get them back. I mean, she never came back for me really like that, you know, off and on, but I, I wasn't raised by her. Um, but it's, 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 it's horrible, but I see the effects on yeah, my siblings. Of course. You know what I mean? I, I see the effects on myself. You know, I, I do the work, um, me and my older sister, you know, we, you know, I started going to therapy at 15. Right. So you have to, you have to do the work and, and be prepared. Like once I knew I was ready to be a mother, I, I was prepared for that. You know, right. so, you know, I, I had done the work on myself knowing that I could give my kids everything they need and, and love them, you know, and not, you know, follow those same paths. Because if you don't get the help and you have some type of abuse in your life, especially from your mother, you will the do the same cycle. thing. Exactly. You so you have cycle to cycle or you'll do worse. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, right. and it's so unconscious, you know what I mean? And even in your mind, when you're saying, I'll never do that, you'll do that. Like I have like a little cousin. You know, well, my my cousin, she, you know, ended up, you know, on drugs. So her kids went to this, the program, you know, the foster care, things like that. She had like seven or eight children. Um, and one of her daughters, you know, she has two children and she's like, I don't want him. Now you grew up in the foster care. Right. Now you're going to put him in the foster care. And, you know, I'm, I'm close with her sister. She's like, but she's a good kid. But she, you know, he just has his own opinions. You know, and let me tell you, when you out there and your parents and you're doing the wrong thing, you're going to have that child tell you that you're doing wrong, mommy and daddy, you know, and that's a child you want to like shut up, you know what I mean, when you're not doing the right thing. So he's vocal about how he and how she treats him. So now she's like, oh, they could put him back in the system. I don't care. And, it, and it's sad, but that's how you grew up in the system. And now you want to put him in the right. system. But, just that's, you don't but, but, but that's a great point. But that also goes to her own trauma as you just said exactly you mm -hmm. got to do the work when your yeah, life has, when your life has been traumatized and mm -hmm. you never deal with heal. your trauma and you never you know, heal. that you you got to heal you got to mm -hmm. deal with, first of all you have to you have to name the trauma you have to yes. admit the trauma exactly you have to figure out how i deal with and how i get mm -hmm. in and get help to help me work through the trauma Mm -hmm. And so many times, you know, that part of our lives is negated. Like we mm -hmm. are taught to be quiet, shut mm -hmm. up. Nobody's mm -hmm. going to believe you. Nobody's going to hear you. And so you deal with it. But then we, then we grow into adults who then we punish either the people in our lives, i.e. the children that we have, mm -hmm. or we sabotage every relationship we have. Yes. Uh -huh. Or we punish ourselves, right? Which means we're really not good to ourselves, and which means we don't know how to be good to other people. Oh, absolutely. You know, because you teach and, other people how to treat you. Right. And or 
we go through our lives constantly blaming, which Hell I understand. Yeah. <laughs> I, I get that part, but you can't keep. Okay, you can't 12, live on that sword. You got you got to give it at up. Five <laughs> at twelve, maybe even at twenty. Yeah, but after you got to give it up. Mama didn't that. do this. My daddy didn't do this. But <laughs> if you if you go into this world and you give yourself the permission to learn and to see other lives, right? Other people. You don't necessarily have to always tell somebody what your story is. Right. But what you do have to do is go figure out to tell your story to somebody who can help you dissect that story mm -hmm. so that you can have another story. That your story doesn't keep reading from chapter one to chapter 10 the same story over and over and over yeah, again. Keep regurgitating it, exactly. Right. Because at a point, everything has an end. But see, when people are in trauma, that's the part we miss. In trauma, I go from chapter one to chapter two. Mm. Trauma happens in chapter three. I don't go beyond chapter three anymore, mm -hmm. right? I keep going back to chapter one and chapter two, but I typically don't, I'm not going past chapter three because right there is where my life stopped. That's your pain. You see me walking and talking every day. You see me operating or you think I'm operating, but I'm not, I'm on autopilot. And I, in any or, way- or, 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 you, or you're stifling those feelings with substances. Right. All different things that we do, right. like you know, I, like I eat shopping, too much, you know, I eat sex, too much, I shop too, too much, I sex food. too much, I lie too yeah, much, all those things. I yeah. steal too yeah. much. Yeah, anything I, not to deal with that. Anything quit, not to deal with that. <laughs> I quit, I start and quit way too much, right? Mm -hmm. I start and I quit. And, and when it, and if you and if you approach me about my starting and quitting or any of those things that I just said, I become extremely defensive. You are not going to talk to me like that. You don't, you don't know me. I don't, but you know, you, and yeah, you know, yeah. you know, well, where, well, you, well, you, you got to identify you know something where of stop. yourself, right? But you don't even know, like, you know, something, you, you know, the pain, right? That's what you know, but you but don't it's know all, you know, you and you, you, exactly. you live in the exactly. pain. And so that's what I'm saying. Trauma can only be healed once you admit there's trauma. And the thing about it, we think people don't want to admit it. People won't admit it because we think that the somebody has to give us permission for that. And then people you know? think it makes them weak. Right. Or, you know, and like, people you know, think make, it makes them you know, weak. Or, or, you know, or, I want people to think I'm perfect. Nobody's right. perfect. Or you know, the they're gonna blame perfect. me. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. you really gotta realize that we go, we lay down day in and day out with so much baggage. Oh my God, yes. Right? We go, and I, I, I have really started to identify that in some cases in our lives, we celebrate our trauma by the actions that we take about the trauma. And mm. I know that sounds crazy, but we mm -hmm. celebrate the trauma by the actions that we take, i.e., as opposed to me dealing with my hurt, my pain, my brokenness, I keep masking it with whatever it is that I choose that I think is the thing that hides me. Of choice to mask it with. Right. So mm -hmm. again, gotcha. whether that means, um, I buy stuff. Too many like shoes. To be too many shoes. Too many pocketbooks. <laughs> I buy. I shop excessive. You know, excessively. I eat excessively. I, you know, I I buy things I can't afford. I, mm -hmm. you know, all those things. All that. Masking, yeah, really. mm -hmm. They're mm -hmm. masking, right? But every day that you wake up and every night that you lay down. At some point in time in your life, you have to realize, I got to give that stuff away. I got to mm -hmm. learn sure? to take, 
pieces of it, pieces of it. Because what's our little saying? The skeleton comes out and what? You it's you all around, around the room. The room. <laughs> it does, it does. Hey. And, and it's so, just so up, the other. And, and and I know I'm not the only one. No, I, not at all. Listen, no, I, I know have, I'm not the only one. Honey. I have gone you to deal sleep. with that bad boy. You I gotta have unpack gone to sleep and all of a sudden you you wide I'm wide awake. Like, wait a minute. I just went to sleep. Right? <laughs> like, why am I wide awake? You wide awake. And in the beginning, when this when that first started happening, I was like, what is this? Like, I'm just gonna go back to sleep. But it's like something keeps tapping you, something keeps interrupting you. So and th- it is things that otherwise wouldn't bother you. Mm-hmm. But you know yeah. what I started realizing? Those were moments. And whomever you serve, but for me, I started to realize those were moments where God was tapping me on my shoulder. Mm-hmm. And he is like, I, I'm here. I'm, I'm, I'm right here. I need yeah. you to talk. I need you That's to right. talk. That's right. Like, Yo, I'm here. Talk to me now. I'm here for you. you That's you've right. Been, you've been calling me. Mm-hmm. You've been calling me. You keep saying, God, come help me. God, deliver me. God, do this for me. God, do that for me. And then he shows up. Mm-hmm. And yeah, then we do we, we we do just like when we sometimes when we have partners and they tap you on the shoulder, you be like, mm, mm, yeah. <laughs> not tonight, honey. Awesome. Not tonight, God. <laughs> not tonight. I, I'm a little tired. I don't I just not now. Can we uh-huh. reconvene around 10 after I have my coffee in the morning? Maybe then. <laughs> so God yeah. says, okay, good. I'm a, okay, no problem. I understand you're busy. I'll come back. I'll circle back. Mm-hmm. But think about the moments in your life where that has happened, those type of things happen. Or you're driving down the street or you you show up someplace and you're like, man, this seems so familiar. But it gives you a feeling and you're like, mm. I've never yeah. been here before. Uh huh. I I've never met this person before. Or you meet someone who reads your whole life to you, and you're like, "What?" They start talking. They're not talking about you. They just start talking about their life. Mm-hmm. And you go. And you recognize it. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, wait, is somebody taping me? <laughs> this is a prank. <laughs> We sleep with all of our anger. We sleep with our enemies all the time. Yeah, and, it, and it's not it's, it's not a good thing. We wake up with them. What was, what was that song? Um, Lady sings the blues. Good morning, heartache. Mm-hmm. Good morning, heartache. Oh, Lord, I used to love that song, but because I choose my words, I don't love that song. I mean, I still love the song, but I won't sing the song because I'm not trying to bring no heartache. I, I got, I got it. I, 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 you know, I used to say, I used to be able to say good morning heartache. I no longer say good morning heartache. Right. <laughs> I say good morning right. Jesus. <laughs> right. right. But it's, it's real. Like when you were saying, I never forget when, um, you know, my godfather who raised me, he was an alcoholic and, you know, you copied what your parents, I, I had a lot of time on my hands, you know what I'm saying? Cause I got home from school like at three o'clock. They didn't show up to like, you know, eight, nine, 10, 11 o'clock at night, mm-hmm. you know? So I was on my own for a long time. Right. And I started when I was six years old. So I, I got into, I got into everything, you know, I was busy. And one of the things I used to do when I was 11, I would come home and have, you know, a, um, what do you call it? A shot glass of, of scotch, clam McGregor. Mm-hmm. And I used to love orange soda. And I used to put the, you know, into my glass of orange soda. And I don't know how long I was doing that to be totally honest with you, but I know I always had a TV in my room, always had my own phone and everything. And one night I fell asleep with the TV on and somebody smacked my feet and they smacked my feet so hard. I woke up and I was thinking somebody was in my room, but nobody was in my room with me. Mm-hmm. I realized it was God. And <laughs> what was on TV mm-hmm. was this movie called, an old movie called um, Sarah T. And Linda Blair, if she was in the movie, and this was after she did The Exorcist because she was a teenager at the time. And it was about a teenage alcoholic. 
Wow. And wow. Hello. See? Hello. See and I mean? sure enough, yeah, that's right. And I woke up and all back, you know, you start watching the TV. Right. And that's not why I'm like, well, you know, if I continue to come home and, you know, drink that scotch, I'm going to be a teenage, teenage alcoholic. alcoholic. And Absolutely. I, but yes, God, and even when I had, when I was going through the whole thing with the abuse was coming at me and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed, I was like, either I got to go or this man has to go because I, I was not, it was like, it was something inside of me was saying like, it was no way in the world I was going to live in this house and allow you to have sex with me. That just wasn't going to happen. That I had, I had some, I had, I had some stuff. But that wasn't gonna be something else I was gonna have. Right. That was no way because right. I could see where that was gonna end up going, and we we were not going there. Right. And I was like, either I gotta go or he has to go. And when God just made that happen, and I was safe. Yeah. And all I could do was say, you know, one day I'll talk more about it. I was like, thank you, Jesus. He literally, literally saved my life. Because, you know, it's like some things you know you got to take, at, or like you, you have no choice. Like, yes, yeah, that was something. I mean, and I allowed this man to do so many horrible things to me that you were not going to do. Right. That right. just was not going to happen. I would have died before I allowed you to do that to me. Right. And you were coming for me, you know, and I didn't know how much longer I was going to be able to. Or something would have died inside of me. And something did just with the attempt of it. Right. And watching you, you know, not understanding at that young age, you know, but as I got older, you know, realizing, oh, you were molesting my sister. Oh, you were molesting my cousin, you right. know. And it was like, oh, no way in the world. We just was like, mm -mm, no. And, you know, like, not, I would never say, I'm a religious person, but I am a spiritual person. I know God for myself. It's like that. My, my own relationship with God and always have had it. And he has always protected me. He's always been Absolutely. there for as long as I could remember. You know, that's just how it was. It was just me and him because I was always alone. And, you know, he, I mean, I'm six years old. Right. Always alone. So he was always there with me and I always had that relationship. And how I really learned about family was literally watching the Brady Bunch. <laughs> I, I, I knew who I was, you know, tell me I, I, was, I was a black little girl, you know, and but the idea of family, because I could always separate, you know, fake from real life, you know. Um, I incorporate my stories, but I know the difference, you know, right. so I'm, I'm, I don't, I didn't think I was any of those little white girls, but the idea of a family, it was, and so I already knew what that was. I, I did not have that because of how the situation was, you know, I mean, when we did have dinner together, I'm, I'm falling asleep, you know, because it's so late, you know, so it's just me. So I knew that once I had my own family, you know, I, it was really, really important for me to be able to be there for my kids. And they did not sleep anywhere and go different places because I already knew what it looked like behind those closed doors. Right. The, the doors in the front were beautiful and shiny. And, right. you know, you had everything. But behind those doors, it could be a lot of evil. Yeah. I, I didn't trust any of that. There, and, are, you know, of house, there are a lot of house of horrors. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. And just like with my niece, you know, she got raped by her uncle and my, um, her mother told her, no, you just suck it up. You know, that's when my brother got his daughter, got custody of his daughter. But it's like all these things goes on in these families, because for you to say suck it up, that happened to you. You sucked it up. And, you know, even though my, my brother got therapy forever, she has her own demon still, you know, from those things, because it comes like, you know, it's like, you have to, you have to do the, you have to go to therapy, but you still have to do the work. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes people don't do the work. You have to do the work in such a way. It's like putting yourself in some of those situations with people, not saying like with adults, but 
those so they have those people that have those same kind of spirits that you're trying to get away from but now you're gonna mingle with them now you all you, you so you're not you're, you're falling right back into that so you went to therapy but you know not saying necessarily her case but i'm just saying in general you have to like you have to not mingle back into that you know sometimes like, though, but sometimes that brokenness looks different for everybody it does. It really right. does. That's what I'm saying. Not necessarily. And, right. Uh, and brokenness, does. brokenness sometimes when we, sometimes when we are so broken and we don't even realize or know how to deal with the brokenness, then you become complacent. And that, and I'm not using that word as a negative. You come complacent mm -hmm. because you feel like this is the only thing I, this is where I'm comfortable, even though I'm also uncomfortable, but I'm probably more uncomfortable because I feel like there are more people over here on this uncomfortable side that I am more relatable to or more relatable to me than if I step out of this uncomfortable into what is supposed to be comfortable because the people in the comfortable side are going to raise their eyebrows at me. You know, raise no, their I, I, eyebrows at me, I, and they're going to question me and they're going to look at me differently. And it, when I start sharing my trauma, which is why you got to be careful who you're disclosing to. But sometimes disclosure comes out at times that you that was not even on your plan to do. But something happens that makes you feel safe enough that you just start to disclose and you start sharing with complete strangers about what has happened to you, right? Well, it's about taking your power back. You know, right. that's what it comes down to. It's right. about taking you. I mean, you put your problems in front of you because, you know, because then people, they will try to use them against you. But once you've shared them, you have empowered yourself. Like you right. can't use against me what I told you. Okay, it's not like you found out, right. you know. But most book. of us don't so know that clear. part because most of us are yes. taught. Well, you haven't got to that point. If I, ha if I have a secret, and you tell my secret, then but that's different. You, you have you have put me to shame because now you look like the good person and I look like exactly. the awful person. But and but that's but that's that's that's, that's when you didn't put your share your own secret. That's different. So you're not in you're not in a you're not in empowered anymore because now someone has shared your right. secret for you. That's what I'm saying. It's different. You know what I mean? So yes, you feel like, because you need to share that when you're ready to share, if ever you're ready to right. share it, you know what I'm saying? But the reality is just like, I have a friend, you know, that was molested. So she started molesting children because she was molested. And so she realized you cannot molest children, um, that that's not the thing that you do. Right. And then she, and I don't know what was the point that when she said, I'm not molesting children. You know, I like, I know that this is not a, something I should be doing just because it was done to me. And so that's like the point because it's like, but I understand what you're saying about the brokenness and it's so true, right. but then the whole situation goes on and on right. when people just don't like, like when you don't come out of that. I mean, I just like, I look at my godfather that something happened to you for you to do that that you inflicted this on my sister or my cousin and tried to do that to me and no telling who else. Right. So you know that, but you have to like, even when I was dealing with all that, I didn't think about that then, but I knew that I did not want that to happen to me or to my children and to protect, you know, all the people like that could protect from those things. Because when something that horrific happens to you, you know, it changes the whole trajectory of your life. Oh, yes. And everyone you know, is and involved with you, you in your, your life. Innocence. Yes, you lose your innocence and everything because yes. then you become either you become an introvert or you become promiscuous or, you know, when you, you see little girls, oh, they're hot, they're fast. No, someone's been messing with them. Right. Trust and believe that. And when right. you're that young and you're made to feel like, oh, this man makes me feel good as long as I have sex with him, then that's okay. You know, you just get a misconstrued understanding about what sex is at but a very not, early but age. But here, here's where I'm always concerned. It's not just little girls. Because oh, no, no. I'm not, no, some little boys do. We've talked I'll about be. this before. Oh, yeah. Our, just, our society, our world and our society <clears> is so warped in its sense of control and power 
that if a young if a young young boy is approached by an older woman and she says, <laughs> you know, I I'm I'm willing to do this, that, or the other to you or for you, all right. What happens? Unfortunately, if he tells someone, right? My my brother told. If he, he was fourteen, late was so eighteen. Yeah. The men, the men in his life, unfortunately, typically don't say, "Who did this to you? What happened? Where are they? Let's let's get you help." They normally my mother dragged her for filth. They literally. normally go through the. Oh, yeah, hold up. Don't rah, rah, rah. You, yeah, you, you got know. that dude. Also, don't worry. No, you were molested, honey. It's still molestation. And yeah, it's, exactly. That's what I'm saying. We're warped in our sense of right, wrong. Right. No, you're right. Yeah, we're, absolutely we're, right. We're warped in our sense of people taking privileges against the weaker. And yes. the weaker can be children, male, female, it could be women, mm -hmm. could be the elderly, it could be the mm -hmm. poor. It could be the uneducated. It could people just feel that they have the right to take advantage of another human being. And so that's what mm -hmm. I'm saying. We all we spend time sleeping with, living with anger and 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 discord in our lives because we forget that we're human. We're all human. Yes, and we are. You don't have any more rights over me to do stuff to me that I, I, I didn't give you permission to do that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't give you permission to abuse mm -hmm. me. I didn't give you permission to treat me um, badly. I didn't give you permission to talk to me and to try to tear me down who I am. I didn't give you permission to do that. Mm -hmm. But sometimes as we grow older, because we never deal with childhood trauma, mm -hmm. teenage trauma, Whatever it is, we never deal with this. Trauma in your marriage, trauma in your relationships. Trauma in your marriage, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, we go through a lot. Yeah, and exactly. We, and we, but we just, and, and as women, oh, Lord, help us. Because, <laughs> you know, us, we get that cape. Well, we got that superwoman. We got that cape. <laughs> Put the S on our chest. <laughs> I am, I, say, I'm not your superwoman. <laughs> I am not your superwoman. Stop it. There are, days, I am not the there, superwoman, there are days that I want to hide from the world. And oh, I do. They do want to. I do. Hide from the world. I want to hide from the world. I want to. I look at my schedule myself. sometimes. I'm like, yeah, I can take this day and hide. Okay. I want to hide. Rebuild. I gotta be like I gotta rebuild myself. <laughs> right. Like look, the bionic woman. I want exactly. To, you know, it's funny. That's right. Because, you know, that's that right. made me just think about the bionic man, right? So that's what I, said. I, that's what, that's I, what think, I was thinking about bionic man. I forgot I how much you. money they spent <laughs> on him, but I don't think they spent as much money on the bionic woman. They did. <laughs> well, he was a six million dollar man. <laughs> That's what he was. He was the six million dollar man. Okay. And what she was, was she? Just, she was just a she was just a bionic woman. She was just a bionic woman, right? Yeah. So they never but even they, gave they, her. But they, but they spent more money on her. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, they well, spent more money because she had she had the leg, she had the ear, she had more stuff than oh. he had. Well, yeah. Well, there. I guess there there was equity. Exactly, exactly. You so, have the bionic dog. <laughs> so for me, and I think for women, it is there is there is so much expectation put on a woman in the world. Yeah. And that's not a complaint. You hear what no, I'm saying? No. That's not a complaint. There is so much expectation put upon us, and that's by the world and then by ourselves you know, mm -hmm. what we put onto ourselves, the expectations that we set for ourselves. And then we don't feel that we have a safe place mm -hmm. to just sometimes just go and cry or, or just whatever it is to let loose and, 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 and have resolve. You but know. you have, you have to, that's a, and that is one of the but problems. You have like to you find that you, place. But you, exactly. You have to find a place. And let me tell you, because, you know, 
<laughs> after coming off that incubate, I was like, yeah, I got it. when I need to take, when I need to like just like let go of the world. When I gotta cry, when I gotta do this, I have to do it because other than that, I put myself back in the position I was in. Right. And we're definitely not going back there. Right. But I had to learn definitely the hard way. Right. And like me too. So like it may be a time like you know I don't think anybody say oh Stephanie's being selfish. I may feel like I'm being selfish, but I know at the same time, if I don't do that, I will end up in a position I don't want to be in. Right. So I did that because I, you know, I'm, I'm just not, you know what I mean? It was the scariest thing, you know, like laying there dying on my bedroom floor. You know, it was, it was just to think about that whenever I feel like, oh no, I could go on and I, my body's saying no. And my no, mind is saying no. That, that was one, that, like I, what I always say, sometimes we're tired and, and, and we're like, we're going and your body's going, you go right ahead. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be right here when you come back. Mm -hmm. And that's mm -hmm. what happens when, when, when <laughs> mentally you think you, <laughs> you have the, all, the whip to, and the all, you know, the bandwidth to go and do stuff and your body's uh -huh. like, go right ahead. I'll be here when uh -huh. you come back. I, I know literally, that's right. <laughs> literally it, listen, I remember and this had to be, oh God, this is probably now 12 years ago, maybe more. I don't remember. It was, it was my birthday weekend. Um, that whole week I had been working, ripping, running, da, da, da. I went, I went somewhere to some restaurant. I don't even remember where it was. I went somewhere, met friends. Oh. And I remember I was driving home and I was talking on my phone, on my headphones. I was talking on my phone. I wasn't, and that was more hands free or whatever, but I was talking on my headphones. Mm -hmm. And I was driving along. And um, when I, when you come into my house or come into my neighborhood off of the main drag, you go down this, this highway, which goes over our lake. Right. And it's a dark, windy road that takes mm -hmm. you over the lake and takes you into into us into our town. And I was talking. And all of a sudden, when I woke up, I was riding the rim of the um what do you call it? The inter the um what do you call it? That what? The, the the thing that sits in the middle of the road. Oh yeah, of, 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 I know the barrier. Yes, the barrier. I was riding on the barrier, headed to the lake to hit the first curve that takes me down to. All of a sudden, I woke up. I was driving, but I don't remember. I remember turning at the light. And the next thing I know, I saw, I was driving and I saw sparks. And then I pulled over on the side of the road. Mm. I don't know. To this day, I still don't know what happened. Wow. But I, it's like I blacked out. Yeah, it's like like obviously, blacked out. obviously you blacked out. And that night, it, was, it, cause it had to be, it was probably two, three in the morning. It was dark. This white truck pulls up. And the person rolls down the window and says, do you need help? Now, I'm a New Yorker. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but even I, in Savannah. Right, I, right. I, I, All right. Do you need him in a excuse me. <laughs> should I stay or should I go? Should I stay or should I <laughs> even, even in Atlanta, like, oh Lord. Even in Atlanta and Savannah, you'd be like, Lord, any town. I'm sorry. Right. So <laughs> it turns out this this Hispanic woman, little petite woman driving this big behind truck, says, Can I give you a ride somewhere? And I was like, Well, I guess I'm, I'm stuck here. So yeah, go with faith, right? Go with faith. <laughs> Jesus be with me. Exactly. So I tell her where I live and she literally drops me off at my house. And I, I don't know how I found her, but later on, I mm. realized she lived directly up the street from my mother. Wow. 
So I went to her house one day because I at that time I used to sell Mary Kay and I had all this Mary Kay stuff that I was because I, I no longer was selling Mary Kay. And I went and I found her and I dropped all this Mary Kay stuff off at her house to thank her. Oh. Right. Because I was like, it was like an angel. Like she pulled up in this big white truck with these big bright lights and she took me home. Right. But I say all that to say that. I had been running so much that week that I never took the time out to stop and say, you know what? You need to sit down somewhere. You need to sit down. I could have lost my life. Literally. That yeah. night. Wow. When I took my car to the time. shop, when I took my car to the shop, the whole undercarriage of my car was tore up. The rims were dented. The tires were damaged. It was awful. But in the midst of all that, I then found out, I called my insurance company only to find out that my car had no collision. Mm-hmm. I was going to say, tell me it was a recall on the, like something. Wow. And, and, I, and, and I was confused on the phone. The person that I was sharing my life with mm-hmm. said, we have insurance. Don't worry about it. The person had taken off collision. Now, mind you, my car was financed. There was no reason you should have ever. Yeah, you're not like, it's, yeah, exactly. I'm sure I'm surprised they didn't, they didn't, ca- they didn't catch it. And, the I, I don't, and, and so here's the thing. That's what I was saying. The window of time of when it was done obviously had not been that long. And then I found it out more so because when I called to find out about um, saying, okay, I got it. I'm going to have to take this car to the shop. And so I need to get a rental. Oh, let me call and check. I'm sure we have that. You could be able to get that. Only to find out that, yeah, I was not going to get that because there was no collision on my car. Sleeping with the enemy. Sleeping with the enemy. Wow. Because when somebody hangs you out to dry in any kind of way, <laughs> you're sleeping with the enemy. And that was hanging you out to dry. And, and so, and I, and I always, I have conversations with my mom about, you know, I remember my mom once said to me, she says, you young folks, you all have no ability or no patience um, to be married. And I said, well, what do you mean by that? He says, because at the first sign of trouble, you all are out. And I said, well, based on the stuff that I've heard from your generation and marriage, you all should have been gone too. Many times. And so, you know. And so it, it's interesting because these dynamics have not changed. If anything, in some cases, they've gotten worse. And maybe they haven't gotten worse. Maybe they were always this very same. It's just that more. No, they've 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 gotten worse. They're more more open. We hear them more frequently. It's social media. No, social media has made all those things worse. Well. Social media. We didn't, that's the thing that's making everything worse is social media. Because even you have all the pedophiles and all these things, like they have more access because of social media. You have all these dating sites, you have all this. So, so now you have all these men like, okay, so I could run these 10 women now. You know what I mean? Five, I could run on social media. I never have to meet them and have a relationship with them. And then five, I could run in person. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I mean, and it's the social media aspect of it. That's really, really what it is. What it is. And then it's like, now, what I do find is that what you, and I, I, I mean, even prior to social media, you could see it because when you would meet a man, and men have said this, some men have said this to me, he'd be like, you know, I just meet you, they're trying to talk to you, and then, you know, they want to belittle you into talking to them. Like, yeah, you ain't all that anyway. Oh, now, yeah, I remember those days. Now, there are some women that would be like, no, no, you know, they want to prove to you. You know what I mean? And I'm that's that how girl. you know, relationship. Yeah. I think if he, right, if he comes off, okay, let's go back. You remember the days of 
Hey, baby, what's up? What's your name? <laughs> okay, it's you and I walking down the street. No, not you, the light skinned one. Bro, what that mean? You don't, okay, so back in the day, no, 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 no. I'm saying, I'm saying, oh, you're saying what that, okay, yeah, gotcha. Yeah. I'm, I'm making sure you like, so, yeah, yeah, so yeah. To uh-huh. me, to me, that was already the, I always used to tell dudes, that's just the most disrespectful thing you could say. Exactly. Like, right? yeah, we need, it wasn't, need one about, <laughs> it wasn't about whether or not you didn't think I was attractive because I was dark skin and she was light skin. Uh, no, let me change that. It wasn't about, it wasn't about that you chose to speak to her. It is about the fact that you came and you made a rift between two human beings who were doing just fine before you came along. And now you have decided to interrupt this union with your negative and your lowly thinking of, oh, I'm going to choose, but I'm going to make a distinction between. And first of all, who gave you the permission to choose either of us? Because neither of us asked for you. Exactly. Neither of us asked for you. You assumed that she would be interested in you because you were obviously interested in her. And so to, to make yourself look greater or better, you thought it was a smart idea to then disrespect her friend? Exactly. Or, or whomever it was. Because mm-hmm. you don't know who I could have been, her sister, I could have been a mother, I could have been an aunt, I could, whoever it was. But, it, but, who, and who, but, but then some women, which I've known, will take that. Right. Know, maybe like, like, oh. And then be like, oh, what's up? <laughs> I'm like, oh. I mean, it's like, it's like one of my relatives, <laughs> they were into a club and they were interested in one of the, there were two friends and they were interested in one of the friends and um, the other friend pushed up. So he ended up with the friend, but that wasn't a friend he was interested in. But then how do you do that to your friend? I mean, he went on to marry her. I can't speak to what kind of marriage they have. It just wouldn't be the one for me. But I think that has a lot to do with it. You know what I'm saying? It's like, you know, it's like when you really think about it, the relationships, a lot of things that happen in that relationship, a lot of things right there at the beginning. Yes. It, you know, they're we, right there. What do it's we like do when all you do the time? Each. We choose to ignore. Got blinders on. We like a voice. Got blinders on. Right. You know, it's like yeah. You know, and it's like they they because not to mention if you listen, people will tell you who they are. You know, yes. and they normally do in the very in the very first conversation in the very first hour, you can distinguish pretty much what type of person you're dealing with. But let me tell you, and this is where we always have this discussion. And I was having this discussion with a friend of mine. I was talking to him the other day, and he's funny. He was like. Have you taken you you really taken that stance that you know it's like I said you know hey I only have sex with my husband and I said right now I don't have one so he was like you've taken that stance he's like well I I won't even buy a car unless I test drive it I said I hear you I said but when you when you look at this whole picture and I said because now you've you know had some cars you know test drove I said what happened well I said because what we fail to miss at we really don't have a lot of conversation like it's really the more conversation that you have because once you jump on that joystick you can't see the forest through the trees you may see it later once you're no longer interested once it's like falling apart once it's like don't touch me no more you know but at that time you couldn't stay off of it you know what i'm saying it was like you can't see i love the narrative of the joystick (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but you know you can't you just really can't see because once those hormones and you start like all that stuff start going on it's hard to see what's going on and more people are stuck in relationships like that have had babies out of relationships like that just for that reason if you step back and had a conversation even if you chose not to wait through marriage but really took your time for like a year to really see what was up with this person you would test drive a lot less cars you know i I totally agree with you but but i i but i am so it's funny you would say because i was having this conversation with my mom today and i said 
you know, I know, I do know, I don't know like personally, but I have heard, you know, people who know of people who in their fifties, late sixties, who did not, um, you know, they married someone and did not have sex prior to getting married. I'm of the school, that, like what someone just said, I wouldn't buy a car I didn't test drive. I wouldn't buy a house unseen. I wouldn't go and invest my money in something just because somebody says it's great without having some understanding, some proof of why is it great, right? And some surefire, some sort of fail proof, not fail proof, but some sort of indication that this really is a good thing. Now, having sex with somebody is totally different. That's, that's different than test driving a car. But the point is, is that in, in marriage, there has to be compatibility. And I do understand that prior to, you know, Adam and Eve not doing what God said, it was designed that way, that you would not be intimate with someone, right, in, in, until you were married to them. That is what- Well, you can still be intimate, but not- But, well, yeah, but not you. sexually intimate, exactly, exactly. intimacy, right? And so it, it's like, just like with Adam and Eve, Adam and Eve didn't know anything because they didn't know they were naked because they were only knew what God had told them and what God had given to them. They trusted and believed that. That's not the world we live in anymore. The, our world. Well, I mean, like, I, 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 mean, I, I hear world, you, but I know, I guess I know so not that innocent. Well, I mean, but you can't, well, you, it can be for you. Like I look at my nephew, he just got married in May. And he was a virgin when he got married. He was 29 and his wife was a virgin also. Um, we just celebrated his 30th birthday, like about a month ago. Okay. Let me tell you, you know, it's like to see them now, they're just like, like they are just so like, you know, my, my nephew and his wife, they're just beside themselves and he, and he is a minister. Okay. Um, but, and his father was also a virgin when he married my sister. Okay. So, um, you know, and I know some other people that are like that also. So I, I, and I think it goes back to, I do, I think that um, even, even in situations where you already rode the bicycle, you know what I mean? Where it's like, you're not a virgin, but mm -hmm. you just like, like myself that you decided to like to take that stand. It was interesting, you know, going back to, you know, a celebrity couple, but it was like um, Shanice and Flex Alexander, where they were in they were in these relationships and nothing, you know. And once they decided to get together, they were like, you know, like, you know, let's just wait. We rode the bicycle. Let's build on something else. You know, they twenty five years well, going strong. That, but that I can yeah. that I can agree with. That I can agree with. I I still. But they didn't have sex until they after they got married, though. That's what I'm saying. No, I was gonna say they they waited because they were like we rolled the bike, but not with each other, with other people. Like, Got but you. that didn't that didn't get us. Like, it's like we we was like okay, so that was, but it didn't get us the relationship we wanted. So we've been there before. Right. Let's try so something let's different. Wait. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And wait, I mean same thing with Sierra and Russell Wilson. And yes, it wasn't they her did. idea. It was his idea. But I mean, that, that has not been a long-term, we don't know how that's going to go, but I don't think that has anything to do with the other thing. I mean, obviously they must be some you know, compatibility and making them babies, but you know, right. but it's like, it's something, you know, and maybe I mean, they have It was, it was Devin Franklin and Megan Good, which everybody now yeah. doesn't want to talk about. Exactly, anymore. which is not, it's like, you know, so yeah. I don't think that that was like it, but I think that it just, I think we just need to take more time for all and of that I agree with that. Yes. Because we miss it without the communication because you do. I never forget, I met this guy and we just didn't get a chance to see each other. But we talked on the phone. I tell you, I wasn't in love with him, but just talking to him like was everything for me. And we and that's like back in the day. So I couldn't even see him. But my girlfriend had introduced me to him. And so he's such a nice guy. And he was a nice guy. But he was like, saying to me, like, I don't know if you're going to like me when you meet me, whatever, whatever. And when I met him, I liked him, you know, because I was already in my head. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he was a very self-deprecating person. And 
but I liked him. Nice guy. I was like, got a chance to do like, um, he had an artist at Carnegie Hall when you go see his artist. Um, Saida Garrett was his cousin. I don't know if you remember. She, um, I remember. She wrote, Michael it was Jackson. on Saida Garrett. So she, yeah. Exactly. She wrote Half Man in the Mirror. She just won an Oscar recently. And um, so, and that's how I got to meet, um, oh my God, what's his name? Because she performed, we went backstage, uh, Marvin Hamlish. So it was like, we hung out Marvin Hamlish. We had a really, really nice time, but he was felt bad about himself. You know, it had nothing to do with me. And I was like, and then not to mention that, and we never got to that point in our relationship, a, a sexual relationship. And uh, besides that, Maybe we could overcome that. But one day he said to me, you know, because I really would like to have children with all different type of people. Like, you know, I want to have a child with an Indian woman, a child with a white woman, a child with this. I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but all I would ever think to myself that suppose I had acted on all of this other stuff and that wouldn't work. I'd still been out, you know. So, you know, you just you just step back. And we don't because we get fed into this narrative, especially these young girls now. All these other girls giving up. I got to give it up too. I got to give up better than the next girl. I got to be able to do this. I got to be able to do that. Uh, they say, let's have a menage a trois. I got to do that. If they say, you know what I mean? Whatever they say, they're going to do it. And you're jumping into situations and it's still not, even if the person, that no one has any respect for you because it's still the same old adage, even though we don't live in those same, um, like you said, the times aren't as innocent the man still wants the girl who either never rode the bicycle or didn't ride the bicycle that often. Yeah, you know but that's mean? still one-sided, Steph, because the oh, man, oh, yeah, it's very want, one the man wants the woman slight. who, the man wants the woman who never rode the bicycle, but he has had many a bicycle. Oh, no, no, I, but no, and like, I'm, I'm, exactly. Of I mean, and then even after- But I think that you can woman, call a man on who, that. Who but, wants a but, man with a community penis? I, well, I, mean, I, I totally like, agree. I totally agree, no, but I'm saying no one at, no one normally comes across a man and goes, "Oh, are you a virgin?" And the truth is, oh, no, they don't. No, no, no and most no. and the truth is, people, there's been jokes about men will go, "You're a virgin?" Oh, no, 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 no. You know, I, my point is, is that I think there is so much emphasis put on sex, exactly that, Too much. that we we miss the boat on so many things because even for the couples who sometimes you wait you wait and you say we're not we're not going to be you know we we're going to build this on getting to know each other on intimacy on being true with one another on the, and not getting all caught up on the the physical because yes we know once you release the, those hormones I mean, say, <laughs> everybody everybody's brain gets stupid yeah. Everybody, it's, 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 drug. it's like taking drugs. <laughs> yeah, it's like take, it's like it's like it's not even a puff puff pass. It it's is like it's like crack, crack okay. It's like uh -huh. yeah. You be like, yeah. uh -huh. I know I just yeah. had that, but can I get some more? Can I get exactly? Some, exactly. Can I get third? Uh -huh. Right. So yes, I totally agree. And then we forget our spirits are now mixed together, and our and our personality. I don't so know high. everything about you. You don't know everything about me. I don't know you're crazy. You don't know. I don't know, you. I don't know your middle name. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know your people. I totally agree. But now I'm pregnant with your baby. Right. And I don't know that your mother crazy. And I don't know. Right. And you don't know my people. So now, <laughs> we, now we just done brought all a bunch of crazy from all sides of the universe <laughs> together to make yet another being that Lord knows mm -hmm. what is going to come about. Exactly. But I, but I do think, you know, the truthfulness is that there will always be people, men and women, who either you're going to be honest and where we started this about being true to yourself, either you're going to be true to yourself, which then you're true to yourself and then you're true to other people. You're, you bring your true self to the people mm -hmm. you meet mm -hmm. or either you're not true to yourself or no, take that back. You are true to yourself, but you, oh, don't, definitely present, true to yourself but you don't present your true self to the people who you're encountering. You, you introduce your imposter self. 
Yeah, your representative. Right? Yeah, mm -hmm. your, your false representative. That's who you send out. And that's the person who most people, they get all engaged and caught up with. And then mm -hmm. by the time I realized that this was a representative and not a good one of you, I'm in so deep, right? And again, mm -hmm. that goes on both sides. I'm not blaming men, Absolutely. I'm not blaming women. That's just human beings. We present what we want to present mm -hmm. to, to gain the attention or the, or the interest of another human being in us. Mm -hmm. and we do it frequently, you know? All the time. Mm -hmm. So- I don't because I don't, if people want to see your true self, I mean, they like. Well, I mean, I think that that's probably what me being a very vocal person always have been. That has always been like, oh my, you're just gonna say what it is. I'm gonna say what it is. Either like you know, and it comes to a point you either take it for long, you can't take it, and that's okay right. too, you know. But I'm not gonna be quiet, you know, because that's not you know who I am. Especially I'm very vocal, you know, about whatever it is, you know, so. I'm just not that person. And and I'm not like we talked about that. You're gonna come in and you end up being a life of the party, not because you want to, it's just your personality. Or right. people are attracted to you. And then some people, what happens, I know just like the same thing happens to you. The men gravitate to that, but at the same time, they can't live with that. Right. Because, because you can't the, bottle you it. Exactly. You, because you know that's what, I mean? what we do to people. We try to bottle people. The very mm -hmm. same thing that we we were attracted to mm -hmm. about them, like you just said, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. once we get to them, get with them, now we want to be possessive like Donald Duck. My, 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 my. I am mm -hmm. not yours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You did not create me. No. You did not birth me into this world. And even the people who birthed us into this world, I am not yours either. Mm -hmm. Which is true. We are God's creation and we are just blessed to be able to come through the vessel of a human being who we mm -hmm. respect as our parents, our mothers, and our fathers. But I don't belong. My children don't belong to me. No, no, they're just a vessel. Mm -hmm. I'm a vessel, right? Mm -hmm. Which is true. I am here. I'm a shepherd over their lives. I've been given a major gift when I have birth children. Mm hmm it yeah, is absolutely. our responsibility to give them what they need, even if I didn't have it, to try to give them what they need to be viable, you know, good human beings, able to take care of themselves and who will be, have a positive and leave a positive impact on this world in which they have lived. Exactly. As opposed to. I treat you any old kind of way and then I'm trying to control you. We have no control over other human beings. And you that's don't. normally you what don't. happens when people, when we try to stifle someone else. Mm -hmm. You so, have to like, you have to know like if you, what you know, if you have, are you a person of integrity? You know? Right. And, and, and people show you integrity in many different ways. It could yes, be very do. little ways. But when you see those little things that they do, you know they do not have integrity. Right. And that's how they're going to be in the relationship. You know, it's just like when, or when you see how they treat other people and you feel, oh, they'll never treat me that way. Yes, they, yeah, will. they will. It's just not your turn. Right. But when your turn comes, they're going to treat you the same exact way. If not, so it's just, yeah, you just, you even this simple thing for me, you know, you could be watching when we go out, how you're going to treat the waiter how how are you going to be kind to just people you know right. what i mean um in the street it says a lot about your character do you have right. character and a lot of people don't have character you know i was at a function one night and the guy you know and he had it going on and all the women were like you know but i i knew that in that room he had slept with like 12 of those women you know, and one girl was like, oh, like, yeah, like, you want that community penis. I don't know who else was like, oh, Lord, you know, but it was like, so, <laughs> okay. So people, you know, you do know, you know, and some women don't want that either. You know, I just like the man they got, you know, well, you know, I have an uncle with all those kids, but most, most women do not want a man that has, you know, a hundred different kids with all, the, like, all these different women. And, you know, then you have some women that will. You know, so it's just, you know, it's so interesting about all the ills of the world. 
even all the things that we talk about, all the things that we talk about womanhood and, and trauma, it's been going on forever. Ever, ever. And ever. I, you know, and I know this the beginning I, I, of time. From the beginning of time. And I know my big, and I know it's like, I don't even think it's not a, for me, that whole fight with like, getting to know because how I was, how I was introduced into the world, how I was created right over those situations and just all and it's and now here i am you know a 57 year old woman you know with all the things i have been through and being abandoned as an infant so and all the other kids that had this is this only had not only happened to me and it happened out of one of those you know kind of relationships so it is something that i feel you know personally Yes. And, you know, and I know, I know a lot of that comes from my whole personal and, and how I chose to, you know, be with my family, with my children and things of that nature. Right. And to learn, like, you know, that, that even thinking that I could be that person, I realized I'm really not, I'm not that person, you know, also. So, you know, it's like, wasn't like, oh, especially like, oh, you know, I have to, I'm now I'm divorced and to go back out there and date and all these things and like oh like I'm who was I before I was married yeah. and how did I you know conduct myself and everything like that and to realize that I'm still that person you know and to feel like what right like for me how I feel comfortable right about those right. things you know because you got to be comfortable in your own skin and that a lot of times that's, exactly. that's where we exactly. start we're not comfortable in, the, in our own skin because someone and, then you, and you see that adjustments for to fit into other people's worlds and other people's, exactly um, exactly other people's sure. ideal what they think we should be or how mm -hmm. they want us to be even though we would never admit that but we make adjustments. Mm -hmm. but, it's true. but then not to mention that now at this age you know men are like oh you know you should just be giving up what's the problem now you're in your 50s you've had a couple of kids you've been married before what's the like really do <laughs> like, yeah, yeah i'm not gonna say yeah. that part mm -mm. yeah but i mean but that's how they feel let's be clear i mean they're like more these men in their you know 40s 50s 60s they're, they're like they're worse than the teenage boys at this point <laughs> he like wow that's interesting you know you think I, I think i'm like are you in a race you know to get it all in before it stops working you know yeah. <laughs> oh boy you know because it's, that's how they're operating though you know then they feel like oh like you know you're not a virgin how, where, how long were you married you know they come from this whole point of view you know that's besides the point I, I will <laughs> say though that taking when you do take sex out of the equation it changes the dynamics of a relationship not and not in and sometimes good sometimes bad well, and, and it's kind of I, I, how it is, though. Like, I think that when I, I've known women, too, especially women that are that are still virgins, that they use it as a weapon kind of thing. That's not what that's about. That That's that's not it. You know what I mean? There are men who it's use like, the weapon, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That That's not it. That's not, yeah. that's not the thing, you know? It's not about that. It's about less, like you know, get to know each other on a whole nother level. That's what it's about. And, you know, and, and, and about, you know, you believing, you know, for me, believing, right. you know, with, you know, me and being a Christian, but it's really, you know, like, let's get to know each other on a whole nother level. And let's like, you know, because sex is really easy. You know, yeah. it's all the other stuff that's hard. And so yes. I guess that's, that's basically what I, what I'm saying, sex is very easy and you can easily get caught up in that. You know, right. that's like that guy that I met on the, um, on the dating app I went out with. And he was like, after the two dates, you know, I heard that people have sex right away. It makes them closer. Yeah. Stupid. Cause you like, you know, you're spiritual, <laughs> but who would do that? But people do it like to try to make it like they want a, a 10 year relationship in two weeks. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, <laughs> And I'm like, I was thinking, I said, how many people fell for that? You know, because he he was a nice looking guy, musician, yes. and you know, karate guy, you know. So I said, man, I looked at him, I said, you must have them women dropping their drawers. You know, I'm not a, he's like, you're kind of cold. I'm like, whatever. <laughs> you can yes. leave me out of this equation. 
Now said I won't be doing a dating site anymore ever. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> Yeah, those, those are dangerous. I really think those yeah, are, I, you know, those, they're very dating, sites, my dating too. sites to me are nothing but pickup pick up sites. That's all well, they, they are. Oh, and I mean, I, and I listen, I've heard the stories yeah. of the people who, and there have been some people who have been really blessed. Oh, absolutely. Like my niece. And you know, fall in love and they got married. Awesome, wonderful. But I hear, one of my new, I hear, one of my nieces got engaged. One of my nieces got murdered. Okay. Yes, that's right. So for that. every for every story, for every yeah. good story, it's like a hundred bad ones. Right, right. Especially when it comes to those dating sites. They are no good. That's not, we're not talking about the exceptional. We're talking about the norm when right. it comes to them. And it, let me tell you, it is nothing good about them. Yeah. And it is like, I, like one of my girlfriend's friends, she met a guy online. She said he was a really nice guy. They were hanging, they were chilling, you know. And all of a sudden, literally, he stopped calling her. Because he was still online and he found something better, you know, mm-hmm. and just literally, you know, kicked her to yeah. the curb when she already thought they were like, because the thing is, they don't, once they get you, like when they meet you, they still keep looking, you know, for something oh, yeah. else. Well, and but look at it this way. Women. They were already searching the fact that they were on a, on a dating site. And I know people exactly. don't like to hear that, but it, I don't think that meeting someone should be like me going to the grocery store. And, and, you know, I'm going through the aisles and looking at all the options or going to a buffet because I almost feel like that's what a dating site is. It's like, it's well, true. if you have the right intent, then great. But mm-hmm. if you have the wrong intent, mm-hmm. you know, it, it, it could turn it could out badly in so many, it, yeah, it could cause you, it could be a matter of life and death. You, you, know? Know, but you, mm-hmm. you know that you've seen that you, your family mm-hmm. has experienced that. And yeah. or even just the fact that you get with someone who comes across as, oh, they're so nice, they're so kind. And then you find yourself in this vulnerable situation thinking, oh, yeah, I shared my information with them and they shared their information with me. But again, I'm, a, I'm one, I'm of the school of people will tell you just as much or show you just <laughs> as much as they want you to see and know enough to get you interested in them, right? And that's mm-hmm. just not, that's, that's on both sides of the spectrum. I, I, until, I, absolutely, until, absolutely. Until they get you in their cave. And then once they get you in the cave, then they start taking off the layers. And you're like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. oh, I didn't realize you had that. Oh, I didn't know you were not. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. I definitely didn't you know, you know, so mm-hmm. I think it's a scary thing. I think, it's I think just like what my mentor was talking about today, he was like, marriage is not a fairy tale. Relationship is not a fairy tale. No, it's not. We have all of these movies like a fairy tale. It's not, you know, and like every day, you're not going to like, it's not like that hot and heavy, all that panting all the time. You know what I mean? It's real life. You got to get down. You got to, you have business to take care of. You have to take care of yourselves. You have to take care of each other. You have responsibilities. Once you have children, you know, then the children become the priority in the right. relationship. Right. So, you know, it's, it's not it's not a fairy tale like people try to make it. Oh, my God. It's like you're going to look great every morning when you wake up. You're going to look like I'm going to look the way you met me at a formal. No, I'm not going to wake up looking like a formal. I got to go get my hair done or I got to do my hair. So I'm washing my hair. You know what I mean? And, you know, I, I don't have makeup on. You know, it's like, come on now. It's like when people fall in love with these fantasies. Like that's what happened with Vanessa Williams and Rick Fox. He was staring at that poster with her with that red bathing suit on. Then when he met her and married her, 20 years later, she not the girl on the poster with the red bathing suit on. You know what I mean? You're not the when you go out and you're dressed up, you're not that that's an evening out. It's so many different facets to you. Tomorrow I'm gonna be on my sweats and maybe my sneakers. Well, not me, but people, because I don't really wear sneakers. But you know, it's like <laughs> But it's like you heard it, you, America. You know, be you, clear, she don't. She don't. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't I used, really I know, used I to be that girl too, but party. now I have all different types because I love, I love yeah. sneakers. I have, I, love I, have, the type, I have the sneakers pair. that I, I want to wear. Sneakers. Yeah, right. I have designer sneakers. Four pair, nice sneakers. I have no, I have laid out sneakers. So nice. yeah, yeah. Uh huh. But it got to look good now. We got to like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to give more sneakers actually. But I'm just saying you like, you're not that person. You're not going to wake up. You know, you got to go brush your teeth. 
You know what I mean? You got a baby. It's like all of these things that people will really get up in their mind. And it's not just men and women, but I find men really want you to be perfect. Like you're going to get up, you know, with the perfect hair. and the, Like you see some of these old movies, the girl with the bed, she woke up with lipstick on. I don't think, okay, I, I, so, 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 <laughs> so just, just, a, just a spoiler alert, we are going to have, a, we're going to have a whole conversation about the male female dynamics in once you're in relationship and what happens you know when you you know he met you and you were you was all you had your hair done your makeup was fresh you was all that right and then he came he was always dapper and debonair and he was dressed good and he worked out all the time and then you know two years in, three years in, you know, 10 years in, you come into bed with that dirty, dingy, ugly t-shirt that you've been wearing from when y'all first got together. Your three kids have all thrown up on that t-shirt. Please uh -huh. throw it <laughs> away. Dude, uh -huh. those sweatpants, that you met her in five years ago, 10 years ago, but they don't fit like they used to. Please throw those away. <laughs> Remember <laughs> that the person that you are in love with, the person that you sleep with every night, the person that you live with, you breathe in their face, they don't like them rollers. They don't like that nasty t-shirt. She hates them beat up socks. She does not like them pajamas that you have from college that don't fit anymore. We all have a whole conversation about your love language, your love outfits. <laughs> Get your sexy bag. <laughs> Go find it. Go really seek get it. Thank you back. Uh -huh. Go seek it. Find it. Yeah. yeah. Right? But you know, you like some people want to take that sexy you from you, and you can't allow that. You yeah. Say that but you again? can't allow anybody to take your sex. That you no. can't allow anybody to take your sexy from you because some no. people want to do that. I know this one guy I was engaged to. He was like, what? well, me and my many engagements. I'm like the engagement queen. But anyway, <laughs> I was engaged. He was like, oh, you got me now. You don't have to do that. I'm like, honey, I don't do this for you. I do it for me. <laughs> What's going on? What do you hear? I, that someone's asking a question. I'm not sure, honestly. Oh. <laughs> um. Live and unedited. <laughs> That's right. But I told him, but right. he said, Oh, you have to do all that for me. I said, I don't do it for you. I do it for me. It has nothing to do right. with you. Right. You know. Yeah. So we we do as women, you know, we have to because a lot of like a lot of the responsibility falls us falls on us when we do get married, have children. We have to find a way to still take care of ourselves. We really do. Right. It's important. Because it makes you feel mm. better. You know, when you just let yourself go, it's not, it's not a good thing. I see some people that it's like marriage does not look good on them. Mm. No. Mm. It's like, wow. Yeah. I see some people you relationships really both don't look people. good on them. You yeah, get relationship? Yeah, is, oh, absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Like, and wow. you know, and here's you, the you thing. Know, Please understand that we're not saying, I, I think Steph and I say this all the time and, the, and we're both guilty of it. Like you see signs of things that are, oh, yes, but there are, definitely. they are red flags, blue flags, purple flags, yellow flags, They're like danger, Will Robinson flags. Uh -huh. and then, and then, <laughs> but we keep going, well, everybody got their own issues. Yes, we all do. But are you prepared? to take your issues <laughs> and, 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 put them and they do because you now you can be in a relationship and work on your issues though right absolutely absolutely but you so, gotta acknowledge that you have issues <laughs> to work on them 
and the other person has to work on theirs. This is one of the things that my best, my best friend always says when people get together, she always says, what's your crazy? And, then, tell me. <laughs> and people will say, crazy? I don't have a crazy. She goes, let's start there. That's part of your crazy right there, that you believe you don't have a crazy. And she's right. And I, and I believe everybody has a crazy, but I, I do agree. Like everybody doesn't know what their crazy is though. Right. You know, because I, I think that your crazy is based on the relationships you've been in. So like right. maybe that crazy was only like that. You know, you may be in a relationship that you haven't even gone in yet to say, or, or you never really had to bring out your crazy because of the type of temperament you have. Maybe your crazy is like, I'll just walk away. You know what I mean? And like, I'm not like, I'm not busting out your windshield. I'm not busting out your tires. I'm not doing that. I'm like, I'm a, I'm, I'm a walk away person. So I guess that's my crazy. Like, I'm just my happy. crazy is I'm a tent packer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, I'm just out. You're right. You're, I'm out. Okay, I'm just out. You know, I, I give you a few rounds. We go a few rounds on the, on the merry-go-round. And then after a while, I just be like, yeah, I don't like that ride anymore. Mm, so, yeah, it's boring yeah no it's Give not just boring it's not cute anymore this ride is not a headache boring. you know it's keeping me up at night right this ride, this <laughs> it's ride chases me around the room uh-huh. chases, <laughs> this <laughs> ride acts crazy when we're in front of other people this ride this ride presents it's it's alternate self you know, it's, yeah. and I'm like, whoa, I didn't know that person was in there, you know, no, and they might no. be saying the same thing about me, but I'm willing to say, you know what? <clears throat> well, it's, it's a ride that starts ripping off the layers. You know, they start going faster and faster on the blades. They start coming off and they pitch up and be like, ooh, what's that? <laughs> right, stuff is flying in the air. You're like, wait, it's like, whoa, that's not even when you hair. You duck it. You duck it in the you duck it on the ride. You need to really reconsider the ride and just be like, mm. so yeah. Oh, but but in any case, ahead. I will I will say that you know we have some exciting things coming up. Um, yes we do this year yes you know and so we are so happy to be back we're looking forward to 2022 and just so you guys know so we're gonna have more of the male perspective joining us yes, we're, gonna have a, we're gonna have a men's series for yeah we're doing a men's series and so we will have men of all aspects from different walks of life and so because we never want to be, you know, we don't want to be one-sided. That's not what we're here for. And we're not here no, to I'm be not a man, so I can't tell you about right. a man. I, right. I can't tell you what a, what a man I, is. I used to a little bit about the experience of different men that I've, I've experienced. Right. But, I, but know, that's, that's still, just, you know. know yeah, that's yeah. a lot more, you know. Right. That's, a lot that's as far as we can go. But we are exactly. going to have, we're going to have, we're going to do a men's series. And we're just going to have mm-hmm. men on from so many different aspects of life talking about some really serious and deep issues, you know, relationships, fatherhood, you know, um, being the, the dude who is, you know, he's all over the place. We, we're just really going to, we're going to, we're going to keep it real. That's what we do here. And so exactly. we're looking forward to that. So we just want to thank you all so much for joining us, you know, um, and, you know, just tune in, stay tuned, make sure you keep sharing and inviting others to join us. We really appreciate you all supporting us. Um, Again, we are looking forward to a really exciting year and um, looking so much to us growing and you growing with us. Um, And of course, you know, we always have a lot to say, but you can always, you can always come back and share comments. We're not, that's that's true, yeah. So 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 we want to be clear. Right. We're not, when we read your comments, we really do. And we appreciate them. We're not asking you though permission for the things that we talk about, but if there are some topics that you would love to hear or discuss, we'd be more than happy to do that. Right. Exactly. And, you know, and if you're interested in being a guest, we'd love to do that too. Mm-hmm. We do interview our guests. We just don't bring folks. Yes, home. we do. We do vet you. And, uh, we're, we're gonna we're gonna go live this year too. We will be going live. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and we'll let you know about that also. Yeah. So, 
We thank you all so much. It's been an awesome, awesome time with you all. Um, you all know Steph and I are both coaches. We both, we, you know, life coach, lifestyle coach, uh, styling coach, divorce coach, just, mm -hmm. you know, helping us mm -hmm. all keep it together in this crazy world in which we, this crazy journey we're on, we call life. That's what we're here to do. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and, and don't think, and so, and please, again, it is not to say, I do not have it all together. I will nope. never, ever proclaim that. I'm still growing. Right. Yeah, still I will, growing. I'll be growing until, I'm, 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 until the Lord, it, the Lord until takes God me. Says you know, that was my Absolutely. Growing. And, it, and it's just going to leave you with this exactly. thought. I saw, I was watching the Today Show, you know, y'all know that's my, my, that's my show. I was watching the Today Show uh, this week and they, or it might have been last week, where they had on these the all uh, different um, clergymen from different religious sects, you know, um, Catholic, Jewish, Christian, you know. Um, so mm -hmm. it was really interesting. This, uh, the Catholic uh, female priest who came on and someone was saying, or I think the question they asked her was about, um, you know, like all that's going on in this world and, and you know, how do we find uh, perfection and how do we find peace? And, it's, and she says something very profound that I never thought about before, but she said, you know, you have to just have faith and you have to keep praying and you have to keep believing. She says, but when we get to perfection, that means it's over. Exactly. Because only God... <laughs> That's right. Perfect. That's right. And I was like, man, <laughs> I was like, she said, when we get to perfection, it's over. And, 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 and we will never get to make perfect. it perfect. So no. I'm never going to be perfect. We strive for it. Yeah. Right. Nope, not at we all. Only, not our at all. goal is to just keep working on ourselves to be the best version of ourselves, right? And so each and every day, each and every day. So just remember that that's mm -hmm. what we're going to do in 2022. My, for me, the, my, my word for 2022 is becoming and becoming is becoming better, becoming a better version of myself, becoming that person who, if I really had to talk to my 18 year old self, my 30 year old self to really be able to, to have something profound that I would have shared with my previous self, my younger self. So my word is becoming. So I, all, I want you all to think of what your word is for 2022. Steph, your final words? Yeah. I have to think of my word too, because I don't have one. But my final words, like, <laughs> just literally um, find a happy place for yourself mm -hmm. because you do your best work in your happiness. Mm -hmm. You know, give yourself, like, if you need to watch that TV show that makes you laugh and giggle for a minute or remember an episode right. to keep because it makes your vibrations high. And the higher your vibrations that you keep there, the less sickness you have and the more you are able to accomplish. Right. And you attract all those happy things to you, the higher your vibration levels are. So I, I, I ask each and every one of you, to find your happy place and try to stay there as much as you can. I know it's not always easy, but but try to stay there and you'll see how that would change your life. Absolutely. I totally agree. So thank you all so much for joining us. We love you all. Enjoy the rest of the week. Have a blessed weekend. Have a good time. We'll see you all next week. Have a good one. Bye, honey. Bye, everybody. I love you. Bye, everybody. I love you, too. <laughs>